Uh, Bill Arn, Data Science Engagement Group. Uh, what I'm going to cover: What are workflows? Uh, what resources are available for people to use at NERSC if workflows will help them? And sort of some broad best practices. There's a lot of details in a lot of categories. So my goal here is not to show you so much concrete examples of particular things, but to make sure that you would recognize if you're in a situation where a workflow would help and then know where to go to get more information. What parts of the documentation, what words do you wanna search for, what considerations do you need to think about? So you'll be prepared to use workflows and do the research to actually get that concrete part. Uh, but also a lot of this is going to be sort of niche and very particular to particular solutions. So if I went too specific in one thing, that would only help a small fraction of the people here. All right, what are workflows? Uh, the definition that we use is that a workflow is a problem that is better solved by putting some kind of automation between the user and the computational resources. Uh, if you find yourself rotely repeating the same command line a hundred times or some other, I just do this automatically until all of it's done, then that's probably something that could happen better in a workflow. Uh, workflow management tools are the software systems that help perform pieces of automation like that. So what categories of things can be helped by workflow management tools? Uh, if you're performing tasks that are repetitive, uh, something that's urgent, or if you want to do like automatic recovery. So say you're running a job that has a small chance of crashing and you want it to restart itself when that happens, instead of needing you to log in and put in the command to restart it, uh, a workflow management tool might be able to help with that. Uh, urgency might be something like you're waiting for a piece of data and as soon as it comes in, you want to run an application. Instead of sitting at your terminal waiting for an email to actually do it manually yourself, you can set up a process somewhere that will be waiting for that data and then it will run it when it sees the data and you, you won't have to be involved. Uh, it can streamline the use of many of the interfaces that access nurse resources. So things like Slurm and SBatch commands and uh, SQ, and like maybe you have something that's watching the queue or the progress of certain jobs for some reason. Or there's also tools that help with transferring data. Uh, some tools have an understanding of Globus or sort of multiple facility or data sources or things like that. And they will, you'll be able to give them instructions that is something like uh, fetch this piece of data from somewhere else and bring it here when it's available. Uh, there's also sort of on the data side of things, say you have a large number of files, a large amount of data, a big pile of something that is too large to manually organize yourself to put into all the different folders and give them proper names and make sure that they're registered in the database or spreadsheet or whatever else you're doing. Some of these tools are set up to organize data for you. Uh, I will take all of the inputs that match this pattern or in this directory. I will do this task to them. And then I will put all of the outputs from those with a particular name pattern in a particular place and though everything will stay organized in the way that you describe without you manually doing it yourself. Uh, there's also sort of monitoring and understanding performance kind of things that these can do for you. Some of these tools have uh, progress dashboards. You can tell them to send you an email if something goes wrong, or it might even have like uh, uh, an HTTP little web server thing that you know shows you charts of how fast your jobs are going or how much is left or uh, what data has been produced or log files or all sorts of stuff. So generic examples of categories in this space. Uh, I need to run my application thousands of times. It doesn't matter what order it happens in, just do this to all of the input pieces that I have. They have no impact on each other. Uh, this is a throughput workload. Uh, my data needs several stages of processing 
with different applications at each stage, but there's an ordering like application A feeds into application B feeds into application C. And instead of running all the A's myself and then running all the B's myself, it'd be nice if something could just do that whole chain with one instruction on my part. Uh, all of my applications have a small chance of crashing. I want them to rerun uh, if they do that. Uh, and then timing and scheduling things, like say I have some sort of utility, maybe it's pulling from an external database that gets updated monthly or something like that. Once a month, I'd like an application to go get a fresh copy of the database and put it into my storage. So with problems like those in mind, what kind of resources are available at NERSC to help? Uh, so we've got some specialized infrastructure, we provide some software and the support from people like me. Uh, first is the workflows working group. There's myself, uh, there's Bjorn Anders and Lori Steffi who are sort of the, the core members of that. So if you submit a help ticket asking about uh, a workflow tool or workflow issues in general, uh, you might get routed to one of us to help you. Uh, so we've been at it for about two or three years. Uh, we're mainly responsible for the nurse documentation on workflows, uh, which I will point out shortly. Uh, so we do a lot of broad examination of many different kinds of tools, both things that work well at NERSC and things that don't, and try to get the understanding of what the requirements are, what the pitfalls are, so that when people come on, come in with questions or problems suitable for these things, then we can you know, point you in the right direction. Uh, documentation, and, and we also do an amount of outreach uh, to users that are doing things that look like workflows might help, to people that develop new workflow management tools, and also to various other HPC centers that have to sort of deal with the same uh, challenges running workflows in an HPC environment. All right, so I will veer off to the side. Hopefully, uh, we see the nurse documentation site now. A thumbs up, maybe anyone? Yes, I can see it. All right, cool, cool. Uh, so. This is docs.nurse.gov. If you look on the left about partway down, there's the running jobs category. Expand that out and go down to the bottom and there is workflow tools. And then there is sort of this head page and this list of tools that we have more information available about. So most of the things that I'm gonna mention have a section over here with concrete examples that should work on our machines, although not everything might be upgraded for the new Pro Perlmutter universe yet. We're still working on going back through things. Uh, but yeah, we've, we've got the information ready to find right there. Okay. Oh, well, I could have done that if it, yeah. And there's a link to it, which uh, I don't like putting links in slideshows because you can't click on my share screen. What good is that? Uh, yeah, said that stuff. Uh, we are continuing to look at new tools to improve our understanding of existing ones and refine the, the stuff that's on there. Like some of those tools are not actually good choices for nurse, but it's important to understand what characteristics of a tool might make it not work well in HPC. Uh, and I want to encourage anyone who is considering using a workflow management tool or coming in with an existing one from like some previous computing or whatever, uh, send a nurse help ticket. We want to interact with you. Uh, interacting with tickets is one of the main ways that we uh, learn about new ways or sort of what's gaining popularity or that kind of thing. So we can prioritize our attention and make sure it goes to the most beneficial spot. Okay. Uh, so a resource available, uh, Slurm Crontab, uh, or sometimes you say Scrontab, but saying it verbally is kind of weird. Uh, so Crontab is the standard Linux solution for running something on a schedule when you wanted to run something monthly or weekly or hourly or whatever. 
On Quarry, you could just do that on the login node, but you were sort of locked to a specific login node when you set it up. Like you have to remember which one it's on and SSH to that one directly. And if something happens to that login node, then your schedule doesn't run. So Slurm cron tab uh, replaces cron tab on Perlmutter. Uh, the interface is the same, like the command s cron tab dash l uh, to see what might be in there already, or dash e to edit it, which edits like a text file. Uh, you want to look at the documentation for the specifics there. Uh, but the thing that's special about SCON tab is that Slurm is organizing it for the whole system, not just one node. So if you open up your SCON tab list of tasks anywhere on the system, you're going to see the same one just for you. Uh, you don't have to worry about what node you're on. And because it's running is not tied to a particular node, if something happens to a particular login node on Chrome it's not going to stop your job. So you get sort of an increased reliability and single point of interface instead of needing to worry about what node you're on. All right, and there's also these pound sign scron directives that go into a script the same way that uh, sbatch commands go in the top of the Slurm script. And that allows you to communicate things like wall time or what account you want to charge to and, and that sort of stuff. Uh, the limits for using this right now are two cores and 24 hours of wall time for an individual process. Uh, you can restart things. There's no limit to how like frequently you can schedule it, but you know, be rational. Don't do this every second or something like that. Uh, combining S cron tab and workflows. So currently on Cori, there are workflow management nodes, which have a, a special form to fill out to get access to. And that's where you leave a persistent process running to power if somebody has a workflow that needs that. Uh, so a lot of those workflow management tools are currently running on Cori on the workflow management nodes. Uh, we don't have workflow management nodes on Perlmutter and we're not going to get them. So a substitution is to use scrontab with a different workflow QoS. And the difference in the workflow QoS is that it has a much longer permitted maximum wall time. It's going to be at least a month. It might be more. So that's a way to get long running processes like, you know, maybe it's a database that's holding state information for your workflow, or it's your, your manager that's accepting commands and watching the queues for you and running new tasks. Uh, you use scron tab to set up those scripts to run and they would run for a month or longer on wherever Slurm happens to schedule this. Okay, it also has more resources available. So you can do something that's at least a little bit more powerful, but you don't wanna be doing actual like production compute there. So one quarter of a Perlmutter node, 32 cores are available. Uh, and there will be a form if there isn't already at help.nurse.gov for requesting access to use this QoS. So that sort of mirrors the, the current process for getting access to a uh, workflow node on Quarry. All right, uh, another resource that's available for hosting persistent services related to workflows or whatever else you might need a persistent resource for is SPIN. Uh, SPIN is for the services that are related to nurse resources, but doesn't make sense to run actually inside the HPC. Uh, web hosts, workflow managers, databases, that category of stuff. Uh, so when you have access to SPIN, you can deploy your own gateway services, API endpoints, all the, all the stuff that goes in that ecosystem. Uh, and there are training sessions for getting yourself prepared to uh, you know, set up your container with your service in it and start running it on spin. Uh, and there is also documentation about spin on the website, documentation site, 
and yeah, docs.nurse.gov, services spin, it's in services. And the next training session is October 5th. So if you believe that spin might be a good solution for a problem that you have, uh, then go sign up for a training. Uh, and also the, the, all the future training schedules are available on that site as well. Okay, uh, another resource available is the Super Facility API. So given the state of sort of security and the challenges of connecting into an HPC environment, uh, launching HPC tasks remotely uh, is being provided by nurse through this API. So you set up your, your tokens and your authentication and then an arbitrary service, maybe it's running in spin, maybe it's running completely elsewhere in the universe, uh, can use this API to connect into nurse, can do things like uh, look at file system contents, transfer data, run commands, run jobs, uh, look at the, the state of the queue or the state of your jobs, all, all sort of stuff like that. All right, I got three minutes. All right, uh, so some more concrete examples of simple things. Uh, GNU Parallel is available on Perlmutter with just module load parallel. Uh, this is great for running a large number of small tasks that have some kind of simple rule that differentiates the, the inputs for each one. Uh, like you can you can use pipe with it. So this just simple seek command, which is gonna do one, two, three, four, five, pipe that input to parallel and parallel is running an echo command. And then you see all the, the echoes come out of the parallel command. Uh, this is great for putting inside a Slurm job and running lots of very small single forward tasks. Like you can just request one node, launch your parallel inside and it takes care of all those individual short jobs. Uh, it's also just a great convenience in general for doing things like say, I want a hundred directories with a particular naming convention. Uh, instead of making those myself or writing a weird bash loop, I can use a one-liner with G and your parallel to, to make those directories. Uh, packing your work in that manner will save you queue wait time because small, uh, single large jobs with many nodes in them will wait less time than a very large number of small jobs that are each one node. Uh, there are recipes on the documentation for packing multiple node jobs with GNU Parallel. Uh, there is some risk using some other methods of sending too many Slurm commands uh, per unit of time and overloading the Slurm controller. This is one way to defend against that. Uh, you can also run things in parallel and sequence. It's not just all at the same time, one batch. You can sort of stack a whole bunch of jobs in a big queue. Uh, the input substitution is straightforward to understand and is really powerful. And you can use regular expressions and some things like that. Uh, it's better than task arrays also. Uh, yeah, go to the documentation. All right. so. I am going to yield at this moment. I am out of time. Uh, there are other tools available, say for data-centric workflows, uh, for handling dependencies, uh, for doing all sorts of stuff like that. Head for the documentation. If you have a problem that you believe uh, automation of this sort will help you with and send us a ticket after reading that if you want uh, any extra help.